Hello everyone, Nate Bauer here, bringing you a Photoshop tutorial brought to you by Questional.com. I was asked how one uses the Art History Brush tool, uh, so instead of just showing you the specs on that tool itself, I'd like to go ahead and put that into a real scenario to see how one would normally use it. So in this situation, I'd like to see if we can take this image and turn it into an impressionist styled image manipulation using the Art History Brush tool. Cool. So the Art History Brush tool is right here, it's under the History Brush tool, go figure. And it uses the history panel quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this inside here to save some real estate space. And in this entire tutorial, I don't think I'm going to be using my layers panel. So I'm just going to go ahead and minimize that by double clicking. All right. So when you've got the art history brush tool selected, you'll notice a bunch of options up here. The brush size, of course, is something you're familiar with. Mode is general as well. And opacity. In fact, you've seen most of these already. The only new ones are really style and area. Alright, so the style is definitely something that's going to be useful. I'll show you how to use those in just a second. The area is not to be confused with the size of your brush. The size of your brush, though it's 100, is only going to be affecting where I'm clicking if, it's, if the area is 1. So undoing those, you can see them popping up in the history panel there. If I use an area of, I don't know, I'm just going to uh, scrub a little bit there and click and drag now, it's going to use a radius of 209 pixels from where I'm clicking. So it's definitely going to affect a much larger area. I'm going to go back to there. So now I've got, I've got a couple of ways in mind that I can create an impressionist styled image, but there's one in particular I really like. So I'm going to drag my area all the way to 500, that's its max, and my tolerance all the way down to zero, and my opacity all the way up. I'm going to obliterate this image. Now the goal here is to completely obliterate the image, then with the Art History Brush tool to rebuild the image that, uh, to how it originally looked, using various styles located here. Alright, so let's go in and get started. My brush size is way too big to begin. I'd like to start with about 10 or so. There you go. And instead of using tight short, I'm going to try tight medium. I seem to have better luck with this one. So my goal here is now to obliterate the image. Let's go in and do that. It's definitely an interesting style. It's kind of looking impressionist already, but it's nowhere near final product. There we go. And now to recreate my original image, I'm going to make sure I've got my original, my original snapshot selected. I'm going to go ahead and use the left bracket key to decrease my brush size. Now I'm at 8, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and start clicking there now. Let's rebuild a little bit. A couple of more times. Now it's at 5. And that's starting to look better. Go down to 3 or so. Bring a little bit of detail back in. The smaller your brush, the more detail you're going to you're going to gain. So I'm going to go back all the way down to one now, and this is going to take a little bit more time, but this really brings back some of those edges, brings back some of that detail, and really makes it look like an overall impressionist styled image. And that's definitely starting to look really decent already. Yeah, there we go. Cool, so there's one way you're able to make it. I'd like to go ahead and try a couple of other styles using the Art History Brush tool as well. So using our History panel, I'm going to go ahead and create a snapshot of this, uh, this piece, and I can go back to this at any time. But clicking on my original snapshot, I'm going to go back to my original image here, and let's try a couple of other things. Instead of using tight medium, let's go ahead, let's use, uh, let's use something different here. Let's use loose curl long. Now this one is a pretty, it's a pretty large brush. It's going to obliterate the image pretty darn quickly here. Let's see how this works out. There you go. I've got the, um, there's the entire image gone. Lower it down. Let's go seven or so. These guys are pretty large. Down to about four. Maybe down to two or so. And down to one. Hmm, this is definitely an interesting style, but I'm not really noticing anything Impressionist-like. Uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and try a couple of other things. Instead of using loose curl, loose curl, let's see if we can go to tight curl and see if that helps out at all. And if that doesn't seem to be working too well, let's go into Mix and Mingle. Let's try some Dab. Tab you're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive with. Yeah, see, now we seem to be losing some detail, losing some sharp edges. 
Actually, that's looking really interesting. And let's try loose medium now. Let's see what this does. Oh, goodness, that's much too long. Let's go ahead and make that smaller. Back down to one. Well, that's definitely starting to look interesting. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create another snapshot of that one there. So now we've got two snapshots. Let's go ahead and try one more. I'm going to go back to my original. And I kind of liked that, uh, which one was it there? That loose, that loose medium that we were just on. So let's start with that one. Let's go back up to size 10 brush again. There we go. I'm going to lower it down to 7. Then down to 4. Wow, this is definitely starting to look interesting. And then maybe down to 2. I'm just using the left bracket key. It's lowered each time. I don't have a specific, a specific numerical pattern in mind. And the number one, the one size brush, I'd like to take a little bit more time on. Wow, that's definitely an interesting look. Cool. So there's our final snapshot. I would think I'm going to stop there. So here we've got our original image. And we've got our first one that we used loose medium the entire time. We started at 10, and we narrowed it down. Then we used, uh, well, actually, we started with our loose curl long, but we used a couple of things here. And we got an interesting pattern. Then we just used our loose medium. Definitely some interesting styles. All right, so just to play some comparison, I went, I went ahead and uh, Googled Impressionism and brought in a couple of images here. I'm going to go ahead and align them all to grid view here. Hit tab to get rid of my panels. And you can definitely see, here's mine on the bottom right, you can definitely see some interesting styles here. This one's definitely interesting up here. It's a different style than I really expected. You know, I'm noticing that some of these don't, well, they really don't have a lot of detail in them compared to the one I created here. So let's see if we can recreate that. Tab to bring my panels back. You know, I lied. I guess I'm going to use my layers panel after all. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my background. And I'm going to use, let's try a cutout filter. Let's see what happens here. And, yeah, actually that looks about right. I'm going to hit OK. And let's see if I can go in and stick this on a soft light. I love soft light. Let's see what that does. Wow, that's really interesting. It brought up some uh, contrast, lowered a little bit of detail, but added some lines here and there. That's interesting. You know, I really like the way that looked. All right. Back to my grid view. Tab to get rid of those. All right, I really like the way that looks. So I hope you learned something by this. And uh, again, Nate Bauer here, bringing you a Photoshop tutorial, brought to you by Questional.com. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask them at Questional or go ahead and post in a comment below. Cool, I hope to talk with you guys later.